Hey guys, we're back at the range today with the M&P 10mm. Here to do a little more testing. I found at my gun store, my last visit, this Liberty Civil Defense 10mm. It's 60 grain, 2400 feet per second, so I thought that was pretty interesting because that's not far off the, uh, the weight and velocity of a like a 10 inch 5.56 rifle, so uh, I'm gonna see what it does. Now, I only have five rounds loaded at the top of this magazine just for function testing, and then the next 10 rounds are the Fioki full power loads uh, just to see what kind of difference we have. That's loud. Now the fio Right, so what that felt like to me was uh, it was a lot louder with the civil defense, but uh, the recoil was not that much less, a little bit less. The, the Fioki has more of a push. It's like the recoil is spread out over a little bit longer of a time period. All right, now we are going to go back and check function to see if I can get the magazine to drop again uh, with the Underwood ammo. Now, I only have 10 rounds of this left, so... The first five rounds at the top of the magazine are CCI Blazer, and uh, we're just going to shoot this and see what happens. It's definitely softer recoil. All right. Now that the Underwood is going to be in the chamber, um, I'm going to change the camera over to slow motion, do some right-handed firing. That's how the magazine dropped last time. We'll just see if we can capture that magazine dropping.
Well, there we go. Uh, had another magazine drop. After I get back home, I'll look at slow motion footage and we'll see if we can come to any conclusions. All right, let's take a look at that slow motion footage zoomed in a bit, and then we'll look at it frame by frame. Here we have the first frame where the trigger's been pulled and the gun is discharging. And then in the very next frame, you can see the magazines already started to drop. My thumb's well above the magazine release. And then about four frames later, this is where my thumb is closest to the magazine release. It's still not hitting it, but even if it was, it wouldn't matter because the magazine's already started to drop. Just to show you a little bit more on that mag release in case I haven't driven the point home. If I have the gun in a firing position, you can see it's straight with my arm. My thumb is not long enough to hit the mag release, and I am trying to press it in. Um, I have to turn the gun at an angle like that to be able to hit the mag release. Now, yeah, the gun moves under recoil, but it doesn't move like this. You know, that recoil will push the gun like this. And uh, there's just, I cannot get that mag release to press until I turn the gun at an angle. In reviewing the footage from both this range trip and the previous one where I had the mag drop, I noticed that the magazine dropped on the eighth round fired out of the gun in both cases. So let's just examine for a moment. This is the same ammo, but this is black cherry. Um, it, it's just the color of the bullet is different. It's still the Underwood 200 grain. So let's just pretend, okay? Round one, fire. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eighth round in the chamber. Okay, so when we pull the trigger, that eighth round would fire, right? When you have the magazine loaded in the gun, the slide will press down on the top round slightly. And when it does that, look right here. That's where the mag catch holds the magazine. And you can see that round is in a position to push against that mag release, maybe, under recoil. So for now, I'm content to accept this as an ammo issue. Um, and, and it's not the Underwood ammo. It's not their fault. It's just how it works with this gun. In particular, this is a heavy for caliber round, which means the bullet's going to be a little larger than standard. These being 200 grain and the standard for 10 millimeter is 180 grain. So if you have the M&P 10 millimeter, I would suggest you be very careful if you use heavy, heavy for caliber ammunition. If you must use hard cast ammo or something similar, I would suggest uh, 9, 10, 11. Uh, loading no more than four rounds at the top of the magazine. That way the bullets will never get as low as the mag catch. Or if you had to load a full magazine of this stuff, I would make sure you had a second magazine loaded with another kind of ammo in case you had to do an emergency reload. So let's talk about this Liberty Civil Defense ammo a little bit. Uh, it's interesting, right? Just from the specs, you would think, oh, this is almost comparable to a 5.56, but it's really not. Now, I would do some ballistics testing, penetration testing, whatever, but that's not really my thing. But what is my thing is study and analysis. So let's compare a 5.56 cartridge to the Liberty Civil Defense. Similar weight and velocity, but this is a 22 caliber bullet and this is a 40 caliber bullet. You can see how much bigger the 10 millimeter is. And it's also a hollow point, more or less. So the issue you're gonna run into is with this, with the 10 millimeter, is may not penetrate as deeply as you think. Because when you compare these cartridges, the 223 has a much smaller frontal surface area than the 10 millimeter. And it's not just twice as much, right? Do you remember your math? Uh, the area of a circle is pi r squared, so actually it's a little more than three times the frontal surface area 
That's the 223. So what's going to happen when this impacts something is it's going to tend to dump its energy more quickly than the 223, and hence it's going to penetrate less. Now what I've seen in other people's videos where they've tested this in ballistics gel, um, it gets about 12 inches of penetration. That's really kind of on the borderline of acceptable. So for me, this round's more of a curiosity. It's interesting. I don't really have a serious use for it, though. You may have a special use case, but I don't know. There's, there's a reason that no serious organization that I know of is using Liberty Civil Defense in any, any caliber as their duty ammunition. All right, that's all I have for today. Thanks for watching.